Hey, hey, greetings, salutations, respect, and love, boys and girls. Uh, welcome to the Sunday Prog stream. Uh, it's actually our 18th Sunday Prog stream, Wayne, if you can believe awesome. that. That's just <laughs> insane. Um, Wayne is my loyal uh, co-host here. I am joined by Cody from Brockway's Vinyl Bites. Cody, how you doing today? Hey, I appreciate the plug, my friend. I'm doing great. I've been looking forward to this. Um, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. So we got some cool stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really excited about it. This is going to be an awesome episode. And yeah, from sure. all media reviews, it's the man with the absolute worst microphone on YouTube. It's <laughs> Kyle. How you doing, Kyle? What's going on today, sir? <laughs> Thanks for the intro. Thank. Uh, I'm doing well, you know. New Year's Eve, what, what can you do? NYE, That's you know, right. <laughs> local natives had a song of that same title on their on their newest album, actually. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, I really like that album, actually. I had it in my top 25 uh, non-prog albums of the year. Uh, just an amazing band. Good shout out to local natives. Uh, but today, man, we're doing uh, album closers. This was a brainchild of Wayne. Uh Really good idea. It's the last day of the year. So, you know, why not do uh, the songs, the best songs that close out albums and the format here? Because, you know, Kyle's always a little late to the party and whatnot. But uh, the format is going to be uh, we're, we're going to do Wayne. He's going to tell us his honorable mention and his top 10 album closers. We're going to tear him apart and tell him how wrong he is. And then it's going to be uh, Cody's turn. Uh, in the hot seat, or he'll do the same thing, and we'll rip him to shreds. And then it'll be Kyle. We'll give Kyle his five minutes of fame, and uh, and then it'll be, and then I'll just wrap it up and tell you all the correct answers, and then we can all go home and enjoy New Year's Eve. How's that sound? Perfect. Love it. Love it. Hey, yeah. hey, and and don't forget to subscribe to Brockway's Vinyl Bites. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Okay. <laughs> you go, don't, yeah, subscribe to all these people. Wayne's actually got. Uh, two channels you can subscribe to the prisms of Prague and a pocket full of heap uh subscribe to kyle's channel you guys know what to do you do it anyway and like i said this is our 18th uh sunday Prague stream you know wayne they said it wouldn't work man everybody i talked to said this is a dumb idea you're wasting <laughs> your time there's absolutely no audience for this thing it's just stupid uh you can try it, but it's, you know, you, you'll be uh, wrapping this thing up after three or four weeks. And here we are, 18 weeks. And you know what? It's not just we're limping along, dude. Our last 10 streams have actually done over a thousand views. So people are watching what we're doing uh, yep. most definitely. Uh, and, you know, my album of the year 2023 just hit 10,000 views. Which, you know, to me is a big deal. I mean, the, my channel has grown so fast, but yet, you know, none of my videos have done anything close to viral. It's just been all hard work. It's the grind, man. The grind is real. YouTube is hard work. You guys know how it is. So, you know, when little you, things like that happen, it makes me really happy. So, you know. Uh, you, you and Sea of Tranquility have two of the best channels, you know. I love the prod corner. Well, that's why you know, being with Pete Pardo uh, was a lot of fun. That was my sixth appearance it on Future awesome. Tranquility. So that was a lot of fun. I'm that sure we'll fantastic. do more in 2024. I love we'll it. See about that. But uh, you should get you know, Pete on your channel. Uh, Scott, <laughs> I mean, maybe That's the beggars idea. can't be choosers, but saying that would be interesting to, I mean, not that most people that don't know his channel, but it would just be, be interesting to see him on your channel. Then I think so too. You know. Yeah. Why not? I'll, he one. would, he'd do it. He's man. That guy's busy though. He does oh, he is so super busy. much. Yes. Oh, it's just crazy. Again, I'm going to give a plug and tell people here. Uh, this is myth of logic, man. Uh, dude, Scott, thank you so much. Uh, he sent me this. He sent me his previous album too, which was really good. If you like uh, melodic, symphonic, American, prog rock, you could do a lot worse than that. Um, but the big shout out, man. You know, I was just talking to you guys about this show they're having um, in Sweden with all my favorite bands. Here's the little promo thing. You got the Von Herzen, Von Herzen. brothers. Okay, cool. You yep. got the return Seven of Beardfish, uh, Moon Fish. Safari, Loomsk, ACT. 
uh, Chronicles of Father Robin, Seven Impale, and some dude I'd never heard of before. So just like he read my mind, he sent me this, man. Not one, but two of his latest albums. Oh, this is his latest album. Uh, the Edinburgh Suite. It features Marco Minimum on drums. And this dude's oh, like him. playing like banjo <laughs> and stuff. I mean, what's going well, like, on here? This is kind of bluegrassy. Is it bluegrassy, maybe? <laughs> elements of rock, bluegrass, post-rock, space rock. Yeah, a little bit. That of sounds Americana. like that's up my alley, potentially. <laughs> he's, a, he, he's Norway's Mike Oldfield. I see. Okay. Kind of, sort of, right? Just so what's his name? What's his name stuff. again? His name is Anders Baus. Oh, okay. And uh, he also sent me this. He's in the. Oh. He had this trilogy called the Witches of Finnmark. This is part two. Okay. Uh, this cat is connected to two of my favorite bands of all time. He's connected to both Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. <laughs> He played in Tim Ripper Owens band and he played in Paul Diano's band. Wow, nice. That's what's crazy. And Old I school metal cred. <laughs> Old school metal cred. Hey, more on Iron Maiden in a little bit. Oh yeah, I hope <laughs> so. So thank you, Anders Bows. Uh, you know, the universe acts in really strange ways. Uh I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know it was coming. I was just thinking about that guy, and boom, it shows up. Uh and I again, I, I know Kevin is probably uh, in the house somewhere. I, I saw him. Yep. Radio. Yep. Thanks we for love looking out Prog the radio. messages, but uh, Kevin over hey. at Prog Radio, man, have you guys listened Peace to Tranquility? Uh, yep, the Prog Corner there playlist go. over there. Pete's here. <laughs> Hi, Pete. I love you, Tranquility. Love you, brother. We <laughs> love you, Tranquility. By the way, I'm gonna get me one of those uh, beanies. Pete was wearing a SOT beanie. Uh, on an episode not too long ago. I'm like, man, I need me one of those. Uh, yeah, Pete, we love you. Thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about this prog corner playlist on prog radio, man. He's like interspersing like dialogue that we have during this show. So be careful what you say. <laughs> Kevin's syncing you up, you know, he's, uh, he's getting ready for the next oh. big show, which is every Friday at noon Eastern with a replay Saturday at 6 PM. Uh, just awesome stuff, man. Yeah, everybody loves you, Pete. They do. Absolutely. Pam is an SOT, SOT subscriber, as you absolutely should be. Uh, yeah, so yep. thank you, Kevin, at Prog Radio for all you do. Uh, today we're doing Best Album Closers. Next Sunday, we've already decided. Uh, Wayne came up with another big one, man. We're going to do, uh, what are we going to do? Gentle Giant. Gentle Giant. Let's just uh, let's just go through their whole discography. You know, let's just go from the first one all the way through interview, uh, all the way through civilian, and just uh, break down all their albums and how amazing they are. They're just one of my favorite bands of all time. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But today, album closers, man, I'm excited. Wayne, <laughs> we're going to start with you, uh, and. Uh, I'm not going to keep notes because I know if Kevin's in the house, he's keeping notes for me. Uh, yep. So uh, be careful. Any ridiculous thing you suggest might end up on prog radio. And even some of your words, he you might capture that and put it in between songs and make you look like an idiot. Uh, so be careful, Wayne. Uh, but yeah, what do you got, man? It's all good. Uh, so I'll start off with my list and then I'll just give you my honorable mentions. Uh, number 10 for me, Fugazi. By Marillion. Just a fantastic Ooh, song. Yeah. Love that song. Uh number nine for me would be The Fountain of Salmacus or Salmasis by Genesis. My favorite band. Woo! Just a great song. Uh love it. Number nine for me, Islands by King Crimson. Or no, number eight is Islands by King Crimson. What like that is probably one of the most beautiful it songs King Crimson ever written. Uh, number eight for me, "Crime of the Century" by Super Tramp. Oh yeah, great track. Okay, okay. Just, uh, number six, "Salisbury" by Uriah Heep. Oh man, like, Woo. I love that record. It's uh, one of the first Uriah Heep records I really got into and that epic at the end of that album 
this killer. Yeah, you know, I, I, before you go on to your next one, Wayne, just yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna just say a little something when I when it comes to my turn, I'm gonna talk a little bit about epics and closers and yeah, that's that's what I was ready count. That's where I'm torn to myself. I have two lists. I'm only going with the short list, but I have a separate list. <laughs> it's like, how do you treat an epic and like a suite and like even like one album that's one song? So is it, it's an opener and a close. How does it work? Yeah, we're going to talk more about <laughs> that. Right, Wayne cool. didn't mean to uh, cut you off, but uh, yeah. What, what oh, uh, number nine for me, or number five, uh, Baker Street Muse slash Grace from Minstrel in the Gallery. Awesome. Awesome, man. Great pick. Fantastic. Uh, cult piece. Yep. It is like that whole album, just a masterpiece. That album By is Tull, uh, one, two, three, four. So number four for me, ooh, it's where it gets really difficult. I didn't put these in any order, but uh, Mother Russia by Renaissance. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. just hearing Annie Haslam's voice on that and also the musicianship behind it has this kind of dark sinister feel just killer I'm for me, uh, the record, turn the I, just, I just gotta <laughs> highlight it for a second Mother yeah. Russia that and album cover too you haven't heard this song or don't know Renaissance man <laughs> Woo! yeah good one good one uh Number three, very winter like uh, Heart, yeah. Heart of the Sunrise by Yes, off of Fragile. Okay, I think that's, that's gonna finish pretty high. Just a guess. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people might agree with that one. Yeah. On to the number two for me. Oh, let's see. Well, this was this is really where it gets hard. Uh, I'm probably going to say, for me at least, it's got to be the cover off of the best band you never heard of in your life by Frank Zappa, <laughs> Stairway to Heaven. His <laughs> cover of Stairway to Heaven. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. It's sublime. Okay. Like, uh, yeah. the way he just completely uh, changed it instead of doing Jimmy Page's solo with the guitar, did it all with orchestra. Yeah. And it sounds fantastic. Hey man, and I just heard Dolly Parton's version of Stairway to Heaven the other day. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. It's a piece and, that, that does lend to, to, to an orchestration, so I can see why that would hey, be. Hey, Lizzo's be playing the uh the recorder part. So it's Lizzo and Dolly Parton doing Stairway to Heaven. It's fantastic. Interesting. That's Lizzo, Lizzo. Props on her. Yeah, we love Lizzo. And in my opinion, my favorite album closer of all time, maybe one of the greatest songs ever written, Echoes by Pink Floyd. Oh, oh man. Echoes. That, that was on the cusp of my list. It didn't quite make it, but not to spoil anything, but yes. It, it's one list, of those. Wayne. Well, if you think about Pink Floyd's catalog and, you know, what are their best album closers, it's the only epic that closes, a full epic that closes an album. So, yeah. You know. Being, uh, gotta, my honorable mentions for yeah, that, just yeah. not to cut you off, Scott, but uh, yeah. my honorable mentions, High Hopes by Pink Floyd is yeah. one that just missed the list. Uh, I didn't know how I would do this, but Carnival 9, I just put the whole song. Yeah, again, as sweet. One. Yeah. Uh, Won't Get Fooled Again by The Who. Yeah. It's another one kind of on the cusp of Prague. Mm -hmm. Uh, La Vila Strangi Audio by Rush, oh. Nine Feet Underground by Caravan, A Plague yeah. of Lighthouse Keepers by Vandergrand Generator. Here's one I think you'll like, Scott, Magnum Opus by Kansas. There you go. I love it. I love it. And you yeah, mentioned and, uh, a couple things like uh, uh, Caravan, uh, talking about epics, ending an yeah. album, you know. Is it really an album closer? Back in the old days, you had to flip the album and listen. You know, is that a closer? Are we going to include epics? Well, echoes, yeah. absolutely hard, hard to ignore echoes. It really is, right? It, it really is. And there's just a couple more. I know you love Maiden. Oh, I do. Um, I put on here Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner or Alexander the Great. 
Oh, yeah. And uh, the last one I'll mention, Dark Matter by Porcupine Tree. Okay. Oh, one more. And Brother in Arms by Dire Straits. Nice. 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 Uh, all good choices. Yep. I mean, it was really hard to do that list. <laughs> well, you know, you got 10, you got to pick. And how many did you have in there? Like over 20, probably. So, yeah, there's, yeah. it's, you know, the reality is, is that when you're sequencing an album, whether it was the old LP days or the more modern CD age or the LP revival age, whatever, the first and the last songs, when you're sequencing an album, those are the two you really think about. Those are your two most yeah. important decisions. The first song and the last song on the album. So, yeah, it's no wonder that we have an absolute plethora of greatness here. We are just so spoiled for choice <laughs> that I'm excited. You know, Cody has built this up, guys. <laughs> Cody has built this up to be the, the craziest, uh, <laughs> most surprising list you'll ever see. Uh, Cody, take it away. I'm excited, man. Uh, I, I'm hoping the hype is worth it. I honestly am too. I'm going to start off with honorable mentions just so you know what we're actually missing out on to get to the top 10. So my honorable mentions, we got Blackwater Park by Opeth. Mm, mm. We got Carnival 9, the full piece by ELP. We got Terrapin Station by Grateful Dead. Mm. And yeah, but I, again, <laughs> epics and closers, yeah. yeah. And we got Bohemian Rhapsody, God Save the Queen by Queen. That's an honorable mm, mention. Nice. Now let's let's get into the let's nice. get into the meat and potatoes here, people. Oh, let's get into it. Pink Floyd. Oh, with visual aids. Okay. Outstanding. <laughs> Pink Floyd, brain damage eclipse. eclipse. It doesn't, you yep. know, that's just perfect. What an excellent piece of music. And then uh, next one is a CD, because I don't have the vinyl, because they're damn hard to find. But uh, In the Name of God, Dream Theater. Oh. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, hey, they're not that hard to find if you want to spend two, three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Pretty sure I have train of thought on vinyl, but yeah, that's not as easy to find as many. No, that was, got, that was a little hard. I don't have that one. Cygnus X1. From okay. Farewell to Kings. Now, someone said La, La Via Strangato. I'm like, oh, God, I should have picked that. But it's okay. This is good enough anyway. <laughs> no... Somebody okay. put uh, the garden in the comments, too. And that's, uh, that's hard yeah. to ignore. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going for a newer song here by a classic band. I'm going to let you guys take a second to guess what it might be. It's my album of the year. It's Inamorata from Metallica's 72 Seasons. Oh, wow. Nice. I love this album. Like, I love this album. And that song, it's a, it's their longest song to date. It's 11 and a half minutes long. Goes through lots of cool dynamic movements and changes and stuff. It's an excellent tune. I love it. Love this album. Inamorata from uh, Metallica's 72 Seasons. Now, what else we got? Oh, Okay. Keeping on with the uh, with the metal thing, but it's very prog at the same time. We got Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's look at this wall, man. Look at this wall back there. There's no way half of these Funko Pops are Iron Maiden. I should say there's no way I was not going to throw a Maiden in this list. Well, and as soon as uh, as soon as we went on our pregame little talk here, the first thing you said was, "Is that Dance of Death in your background?" I mean, so clearly <laughs> the man knows his Maiden. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good call right there, man. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Anybody that asks me is uh, made in Prague, just listen to that track and uh, come back to me. Next up is one of the best Prague album closers ever put on vinyl. And it's the short version that we got for like 35 years until they remastered the CD. Steve Hackett, Shadow of the, of the Hierophant. Yeah. 11 minutes and it's the short version okay yeah. the full version is actually 18 minutes long if you buy the remastered disc hmm. it's it's just awesome and every time i've seen him live he plays the end piece of that and the drumming is just awesome i've seen him about seven times and you know he's he's just killer oh yeah i, I was yeah. gonna talk about it but i don't need to now <laughs> hey he even he even drew on it for me check that out <laughs> awesome <laughs> sweet yeah <laughs> I was gonna oh. you know, eclipse brain damage eclipse is in mine too. So thank you, for taking them off, saving saving everybody time. 
This next one is going to catch all of you by surprise, and you might even say I'm wrong. I might even get the wrong pick, but it's Prague adjacent to me. It's kind of more classical than anything, actually, but it's uh, it's Meatloaf, for crying oh. out loud. Yep. That oh. is an awesome. This album is incredible, and that song is such an epic, big, bombastic way to end the album. I just, yeah, I mean, hey. If I'm wrong, so what? I'll die on this hill. This is my choice. Hey, man, it's and, it's Todd yeah. Rundgren doing all kinds of Todd Rundgren-y things, and yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, it's, it, you know, you could make a case that it's quasi-prog even. Mm -hmm. And he's and he's from Ohio, I believe, isn't he? I think he so, knows? yeah. I think he's. I think he originated from uh, where you're from, Scott. See, I'm not originally from Ohio. I, I moved up here... <laughs> Uh, oh, because okay. my dear, sweet, beautiful wife is from here. Uh, but uh, I'm more of a nomad. I'm, you know, I'm not really from anywhere. So Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Cody, home. just so you know, I, I'm i probably one of the few kids in kindergarten that knew the all the lyrics to that album by the time I was like five. Oh, oh, oh me, me too, me too. My yeah. mom used to have a my mom used to have a Monte Carlo with a cassette deck in it, and she had a burned copy of Battle to Hell that we used to play every day. We would sing all the songs on it all the time. Yeah, it's it's one of those albums, right? Yeah. Next up, Genesis. Okay. We had a comment, so before you go, Cody, nice. with your next one, <laughs> I absolutely nice agree one, with the, uh, me yep. who we uh, cookie gun. Yeah. And yeah, uh, nice uh, Louie also uh, had uh, suggested uh, this in, uh, I, I think it was on Facebook or whatever, that, you know, it tells the story of a whole day in the life in the night section, closes yeah. out the album in such a beautiful, gorgeous way. It's a, it's one of my honorable mentions. So somebody just mentioned it. So continue, Cody. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, hey, there's room for the Moody Blues, right? It's all good. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, my favorite Genesis song ends this album. Y'all already know what it is, but if there's anyone watching that doesn't, it is Horizons and Supper's Ready. Just the, the whole side with that beautiful guitar solo and then walking across the sitting room. That has some of the best performances I've ever heard in music on it. And, you know, not just by Genesis, but in music, period. Yeah. It's It's got, you know, some of the best drumming that I think I've ever heard laid to tape. It has that awesome keyboard solo, you know, in Apocalypse 98. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, speaking of great keyboard solos, we're going to get up to my next one here, which Scott has on the wall behind him. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised that I was reading the comments, and I'm surprised like everybody seemed to pick a lot of yes songs, but no one really picked Heart of the Sunrise. I think there I was, was I think there was one, I think Jeff Shilka. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. that was no, no, Jeff Shilka, man, dude, you did end this dream. <laughs> Hello. I think it was, yeah. uh, oh, come dude. on, man. Come I on, it, Jeff. I think it was Richard, <laughs> actually. I think it was Richard, Richard Fusey. Hi, Richard. I think it was Rich that uh, that mentioned us in the comments here, but somebody for the did, most yeah. part, I saw people saying like Awaken and you know, Ritual and stuff. I'm like, those are great, but. Someone this on Twitter cool. mentioned a week Awaken, I know, Scott. Yeah, so a lot of yeah. people were mentioning Awaken. That's the one, and it's got Bill Bruford on it, you know. There you go. Now, but it brings me to my number one. What could the number one be? It's not technically prog, but it so is at the same time. <laughs> it's uh well, I'll give you a hint. It's up on my wall behind me. The greatest. Oh, there you yeah, go. That's the absolute best, the greatest, the end, you know, that carry that uh, golden slumbers, carry that weight, the end. I mean, you could make an argument for the whole, yeah, there we go. There you go. And and you got the Giles Martin mix as well. It's the best. It's a good mix. Yeah. yeah. Is it? But uh, it is, it's fantastic. But okay. um, yeah, this is, uh, this is my number one. It's my arguably, Arguably my favorite song of all time, and that whole side too is just—it's my favorite side in all of music, and that's incredible. Is and and you know, we did have a lot of votes for another album closer from the Beatles, uh, which I cannot argue. I, I I was going back and forth: is it Her Majesty or is it Day in the Life? Well, Day in the Life's a better song, obviously, but if you look at that whole side two suite, 
and the way it ends, it's just absolute perfection. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Cody. I thought you'd say good night. <laughs> oh, there you go. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's that, that's my picks. Nice. Brockway's vinyl bites up in this. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> Who's I'm next? messing with you, Jeff Shilka. I see everything. <laughs> I yeah. see it all. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, Kyle, uh, I don't know what you got for us. I'm a little scared, man. Your Mount Rushmore picks, man. That was that was epic and uh, unexpected. And unexpected. So, well, I'm okay, little, so I'm I was going to do <laughs> – You're frightened. Yeah, it's going to be different than most people's picks. Well, yeah, I told you I did two lists, so – uh, there was some crossover, but I, I'm just going to show you the just standard songs as opposed to epics, full length, side lengths kind of stuff and sweets. And I wasn't okay. considering sweets. So um, there's one Genesis album, one Genesis song I would have chosen, but it's not the last piece technically on the record. So, But here are my two honorable mentions for this part. Um, ben Sinister, uh, who toured with Flying Colors, sort of prog pop band, their, their album uh, Small Fame. There's a track called Quest for Love, which is totally epic, even though it's like only four and a half minutes. But um very much channeling like Dio or, you know, Judas Priest, but it, it's got this keyboard solo that's very vintage. I love it. And the band Mew, we talked about, was it last week, week before? I can't remember. Yeah, I love Mew. Um, the album Fringers, not Fringers, it's Fringers, as I came to learn. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> but even though it's both the G, they're, they're, the track um, Comforting Sounds, I believe, is the last track on this. Oh, you know what? This version has two extra songs on it, but the standard version of Fringers right. has is Comforting Sounds. It's their very kind of epic, floaty, dream pop kind of escapist track. So they're from Denmark, if people... Awesome. So, all right. Now we'll get into the, li the list proper. I'll go through this as quickly as I can without destroying my back. Number 10, I do have the aforementioned A Day in the Life from uh, Sgt. Pepper's. You know, this is the first oh, album I own, the first album I love for the most part. And uh, it's the Beatles doing prog to me. You know, awesome. it's everyone knows it. Everyone, their mother knows it, but it still holds up to me. So it's awesome. And then that that um, that interplay between the song that Paul wrote and the song that John wrote, putting them together in A Day in the Life, it's perfect. As far as I know, and uh, I would have to get confirmation from some of the big Beatles fans uh, on YouTube, like Rachel's Ghost and people like that who know a lot more than I do. But I believe that's about the only time that that actually happened where you had, uh, you know, one part of a song was John. The other part of a song was uh, was Paul. Usually it was just one, it's or, one the or the other. other split, uh, yeah, the collaborations. So. I don't know. The Beatles, some Beatles aficionados probably could go into detail and say, well, well what a great, yeah, what a know. great song either way. Yeah. A fantastic call. What a way to end an album I mean, with that, with that one piano hit that lasts forever in a day. So awesome. No, I know. I mean, if I'm choosing between like Abby, the Abbey Road Suite, and this, I would lean toward it because Abby's actually I I like slightly more than Sgt. Pepper's. I love both of them, but this particular piece, I think, because I'm taking into individual part of Abby. You know, I mean, it's splitting hairs, but I have to go with the day in the life. So nice. All right, so nice. number nine, I had to have them in here somewhere, and this is another case of where I was choosing like one song as opposed to sweets and that kind of, I could have chosen five or six, but it's my favorite band Marillion and their album, a phrase song like the song King, which I mean, many things stand out about this track. I, I think I think of most for it actually is the crazy drum work from Ian Mosley at the end. He sounds like Neil Peart to me, but um, it's about like fame and, you know, it has this, massive build and um afraid of sunlight while it followed brave which was sort of their some ways their sort of do or die album that has become sort of w renowned this record is sort of less is more is doing kind of a similar aesthetic as brave but a little slightly you know more accessible um and king to me is it's i love the title track i split hairs but it's you know it's arguably my favorite song on afraid of sunlight nice yeah, that's an underrated album overall, and and you're right. It's because of what you know what happened right afterwards. Right. No, and I mean they wrote it just the year after, so it was yeah. their last. I think it was their yeah. last album on the on the major label. So yeah, it was. Um, so number eight. Um, getting a little heavy here. I, I I just literally put this in here this morning. I forgot about it. between the Baird and Me's colors. Oh, the track no. White Walls is is a mass. It's probably my favorite progressive metal song of the last fifteen years. And it's the, the best thing I've 
my favorite thing they've ever done. It's actually, we're talking about Stairway to Heaven earlier. The guitar solo, I always think of Stairway to Heaven <laughs> at the end of this um, from Paul, um, I forget his last name from, from the band. But um, yeah, it's it's just the buildup is just crazy. And it, I'll admit that it was that, this album and that song specifically, which got me to tolerate and into extreme metal. I liked Opath and Orphan Land a little bit, but realized like, no, I can deal with the vocals because the music is just too damn good, yeah. you know? That's and, where I'm at with them. It's, it, it, I want to ignore them, but you just can't when the music's that good. <laughs> that That's kind of how it gets sometimes. And it's just, yeah. you know, you just give in. He's like, you know, you may as well just focus on the best part and your your brain will eventually accept it. So Surrender. someday maybe Radiohead will, will click for me. I don't know. That That's mainly, I can't, I can't get into Tom York's vocals, unfortunately. <laughs> So number, what well, that was number set number eight, number seven, um, another British band from the same era as Mew, Ocean Size, and they're they're all um, uh, everyone into position. They're the track Ornaments Last the Last Wrong, which it's one track, yeah. and it. What I love about that track specifically is I always think it sounds like something from the 70s, even though they're super heavy ocean size. They're not metal exactly, but they get really heavy in many parts of this record. But that track, I, th I felt like I was listening to like Super Tramp or or ELO or something at the end. Right. Like, and it builds, it just builds. The, the following album, probably the prog scene, know a little bit better frames which has an, an, an amazing closer. And I was, it's just really just put them in a hat. You know, I love frames too, but my heart kind of, cause this is the first one I got into my heart kind of goes leans towards uh, the ornament, the last wrongs from. Hey Kyle, are you a Bippy Clyro fan? Oh yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I saw them live yeah. a few times. I have some of the records. I'm still, I have most of the records on CD. So. so two of the guys, for those that don't know, two of the guys from ocean size, a fantastic band that I guess are they are they done or just on hiatus? Oh no 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 they're they're unfortunately it's a they're long done, story right? but the 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 short of it is that the drummer didn't really make peace with the rest of the band and so and he's doing some other work the drummer is yeah. fantastic the Mark Heron but so it's really Mike Vinard's solo career and he work, plays with Biffy of course that's what yeah. he's sort of pays his bills and he also has a project called British Theater so he you has a new record crazy. Kyle is. Biffy, you see them opening at Reading and Leeds, playing in front of 300,000 people, man. And I kid you not, a month later after headlining, not just playing, headlining festivals in the UK, I seen them at a, a place called the A&R Music Bar in Columbus, Ohio, and I swear there were 125 people there. Here versus, well, I know they're huge in Europe. It's just ridiculous. Well, they've it's had so some bad. big openings. They opened for Muse, and yeah. they've, yeah, I mean, they've grown a little bit. I, I don't know. It's you think one of these days they will kind of, you know, become like a household name. They'll be in a plane theaters or you know, beyond the clubs. I don't know, man. They just don't click with American audiences. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters out there, Biffy Clyro, amazing. What else you got for us? All right. So number six, someone, people, the, the audience will probably appreciate this a little more. I had to pick a Crimson song and I picked Starless. So, you know, it's the peak of Crimson to me, even though I love so much other Crimson, the sax, the sax epic at the end is just what totally makes this album end. And that's part of it is you want an album that's going to end well. I think of great album closer, it makes the album better. And so I think that's what kind of put Red over the top for me. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I had you to go with go Starless. a lot of different ways with King Crimson. And and uh, and I think um, I think Neil Morse and Mike Portnoy do a really nice cover of that too. Yeah, they Starless. do. Was that one on the on the? It was one of the. Was it Transatlantic or was it one of the Neil Morse albums like the bonus tracks? Yeah, I remember that. It was it was the Neil Morse cover to cover record. That's right. And it, so they all, they do heard. stuff like they do stuff like the Moody Blues. They do Todd Rundgren. They do I think they do the Stones maybe. Too, they even covered I think that was the one they covered the Monkeys, which I had to tell my wife about that. My mom, my wife's a massive Monkeys fan. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like Prague, but you know it's like I think they they covered Pleasant Valley Sunday. So yeah, that was a great covers record. I like all three of them. The uh, yeah. the Morse. Oh, they did Portnoy, more than one. Uh, Randy, Randy George, George. Randy George. Yep. Yeah, so they're yep. all three of them are, are tagged in the title. Hopefully, there'll be a part four because I got all three on vinyl. I really enjoy them. Uh, it is fun to hear my prog heroes playing, uh, you know, stuff you wouldn't expect out of them, you know, playing crazy horses by the Osmonds or some. It's just a I lot know. of fun. Like, <laughs> What's this is the Osmonds. Up, all right, number, I think this is number five, if I'm What's counting. Five? Yep, <laughs> Dream Theaters Learning oh, to Live. So, yeah. I mean. I mean, a lot of people love Dream Theater, and, you know, I was going back and forth because I actually like Awake slightly more, but, I mean, I love Space Divest, but it's kind of a, 
a, it's a lower, this is a more energetic, epic closer than, than Space Divest. So, yeah, I mean, I, Learning to Live is my favorite track on Images and Words, even though I love the whole record. And um, you can never get that little earworm with the keyboard and the way it just never ends. It never, it never seems to end. Like, you think it's going to end, and it never ends in a good way. So, um, think about the, the lyrics that John Myung wrote, the 90s bring new questions. I wonder if he'd be writing a new song with Portnoy back and then the 2020s bring new right. questions. <laughs> So hey, we, number we have four. Questions. We have many, many questions. Oh. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read up. There you go. Images, words. <laughs> number four, my beloved band Dredge and their album, their second album, their epic concept album, LCL, the song The Canyon Behind Her, which is just, it asks the question, does anybody feel this way? Does anybody feel the way I do? Um, it's it's just unbelievable. They play at every concert now. It's a wall of sound. And it just kind of builds and it, it you just left kind of speechless after it every time I hear it. So Salvador Dali paintings. And I don't concept album about sleep paralysis, but um, you know, we're still waiting for the next dredge album whenever it comes. But uh, yeah, this is the masterpiece. You always seem to have the inside track on stuff. I like that. Are you I follow anything? them religiously. You know, yeah, I, you? I went to Santa Cruz, California, and saw them play their first two albums live, including that. And you know, I, I contact. I'm in touch with the community. Um, it could be a couple of years. It could be this year coming next yeah. year i don't know uh they, they've worked on album uh, music and everything it's more of a matter of they haven't had the money they haven't because they're not doing music full-time they the, the singer works for adobe now and he lives in like i think he lives in seattle he doesn't live in northern california yeah. anymore so and you know don't get it. it twisted all our favorite bands they uh, are on prog radio <laughs> i was like i want to shout out to kevin on prog radio i was looking through the charts yeah. list and dredge among many favorites of mine are on there so you know it's like it keeps a growing list and they have like an up and down like it's up six spots kind of like a billboard thing so i noticed yeah mew and dredge and a bunch of those bands were on there so i'm telling you kevin's doing a yeoman's job over there at prog radio he's uh, awesome no he does not pay me uh I am an unsolicited uh, sponsor, I guess uh, you could say. I uh, I just love what he does. I always have. Uh, you know, even before he and I were even talking, he was watching my videos. I was listening to his little radio show there. Well, he's, so, he's awesome. you know, it totally made sense for us to do a little something together. You know, there he is chiming and, in. And, and Scott, anyway. I got to say, your your show that you did with him on Prague Radio was excellent. I listen to Prague Radio all the time. Uh, I loved your show that you did. I told you this a couple of times now, but I just think it was so great that you got to do that. And Prague Radio, um, I was listening to them a couple of weeks ago, and they were doing the year-end countdown, um, and they played that band Moon Safari. I had never heard it before. I went and got the CD. Now it's one of my favorite albums uh, of the year. It's yeah, so amazing. amazing. It's, it's fantastic crazy. record. What Keep a great fun. band. All five albums. I love Moon Safari. Kyle, where are we at now? Number three. I'm almost three. done. <laughs> No, 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 All right. That's what I got. Oh, another uh, essential. I, I didn't go with Cygnus. I went with uh, from. I went with Natural Science, which is a, an absolute banger track for me. I, I love yes. the, the time changes. We talked about this in the Rush discussion a few weeks ago, but um, <laughs> yeah, this is an, a total favorite of mine. I it's Rush completely writing like a prog piece for the masses, um, and so yeah, funny. from 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 the Permanent Waves record from 1980. Number two. An all-time favorite of mine, Pain of Salvation, oh, another yeah. prog metal staple for me, uh, the perfect element title track. I think it's it's like Learning to Live. It's a track that never seems to end, and I like that. There's different sections that keep kind of going back, of little piano parts and everything. Um, yeah, I think Daniel Gilmo never put more into one song to me, and it's just it's perfect. It's a perfect song on a perfect element. I think the, the perfect element title is apropos for it. Yeah. He's so, amazing. Daniel Gildenlow. Uh, you know, for my viewers, maybe Pain of Salvations may be a little heavier than their normal fare. But you know what? He was uh, the fifth guy in Transatlantic there for a while. And, uh, did part, of the job, part of the Flower Kings at one point. Part of the Flower Kings for two albums. Fort Noise Beetle, or the uh, the Zeppelin tribute, the, the yep. Hammer of the Gods. I saw him. I went to New York City and got a picture with him in Fort Noise together. He's incredible. Love him. All right, what else you got, Kyle? Kind of really a big deal to me. <laughs> yeah. So number He's one has already been shown once. I'm going with Heart of the Sunrise. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't deny it. it's like the perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect prog song, perfect yes song, you know. Um, and, I, you know, I always we... think of Buffalo 66, too, with it. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Now, but do we have to deduct points for uh, Eddie Offord's little uh, trick at the end with the door opening again and getting a, a second bite of a We Have Heaven? 
<laughs> Doesn't happen on the original album. <laughs> yeah. Was that uh, in the but, remaster? I've I've never had yeah. a problem with it. So it's it's been there for I would say ninety nine percent of the people uh, growing up listening to that album uh, have that annoying little thing at the end of Heart of the Sunrise <laughs> where yeah. you know, the little comeback thing. Yeah. I love Heart of the Sunrise. I'm on record as saying it's my favorite song of all time. So oh, there you go. Wouldn't even make it's my list. Hard to argue. It's just so perfectly composed. I mean, the answer is no. Heart of the Sunrise will not make my list today. Oh, <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Fragile's that. not your favorite Yes album. We know that much. So, <laughs> I, you know, yet it is the best sounding Yes album to me. I really do believe it is their best engineered and best produced, which is crazy because, you know, 1971, that's right. not. But, you know, I said I had a little bit of a problem with Epic's closing an album being considered for this for two reasons. One, you know, the old days you had to flip it over. So it really didn't feel like an album closer as much as side two of that album you were listening to. So (sighs) focus, focus, man. Eruption takes up all the side two. What a great way to end the album. But it doesn't really feel like an album closer is just side two. What about Shahrazad, man? That, what a that, fantastic! It's an album closer, but it's all aside too. I'm not including it. I, I had that on my epics list. Time. Yes, yes. Oh my! Stranger God. in Your Soul. I mean, Stranger in Your Soul. How do I not include? I'm not including it. And but it's so 25 much- minutes or whatever yeah. it is. So it's <laughs> album oh, closer. Hey, hey, hold on. What about what about what about all of the above? Yeah, another one. I almost pulled that. But is that that's not the album closer, is no, it? No, no. I know it's it's the oh, end right. but that's a right. 30 minute song. Yeah. It's it. it's yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Sympty, which we were yeah. just alluding to the opening track off of that, the song that closes it. The, the Procol Harum cover. Yes. This or is Procol, the Procol Harum. Harum. Uh in held twas and I uh takes up all the side too, not including it. Uh mentioned already several times. Uh, Plague of Lighthouse Keepers. It's all a side two. I'm not including it. We've had people talking about uh, Stardust. We are. What a great way to end the album. It's 25 minutes long. I'm not including it. And Pete Pardo, we love you, man. You are just the most awesome uh, YouTube host out there. I'm not including supper's ready, man. It's oh my Cody. God, Cody right, is dude. just uh, I had Cody. I had it on my epic list for whatever it's worth. So and and, and it, it's self-serving, Cody. And Let me catch my breath. Know, hold on. Hold the hold your disbelief because this is a little self-serving. Maybe I'm holding some of these back because maybe you'll be invited back to uh, best epics episode where some of those would probably be yeah. included, right? Okay. All right. All and right. And you know. It's just, it's not their fault they were on side two instead of side one. What about the icon? I had that one too. Yep. Oh, man. No. <laughs> and finally, uh, you guys mentioned it. Oh. Echoes. Hey, but yeah. Oh, it, one okay, of the yeah, greatest that's... moments in the history of recorded music is side yeah. two of metal. But it's all a side two. So I was having a little trouble uh, wrapping my mind around it as an actual album closer. And then uh, let's see. We'd have to ask Chris Squire what, whether an album closer and epic right? works as an album, you know, because he, he defined the epic. <laughs> he did. He did. And again, yes. he had a very self serving reason. But I'm going to play a little game. Mention the song that closes out this album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Carrying No Cross almost made the list. How about the song that closes this one out? Uh, Ian, oh, Stardust. Uh, Stardust. Mentioned Stardust. It. Yeah. In uh, in the chat here, uh, what's it called? Rock and Roll Suicide or something? Yeah, I think so. yeah. Rock and Roll Suicide. I'm an idiot. That's, a, that's uh, a great album. This one, Complicated Game, almost made the list. One of the greatest songs ever. What a great XTC. way to end. My favorite yeah. album uh, from XTC. Not mentioned yet so far. I almost put the, Raven. Yeah. the title track off of the Raven. So amazing. Uh I am not going to stop beating the drum for this like album, many. man. 27 questions. Seven questions. And this album. Yeah. Uh, last song on this one. Al Stewart. Oh, Year of the Cat. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Track. I've, I've never heard that whole thing, but I you know, know the song because it's a is staple. Is it Prague? Is it not Prague? I don't care. 
Uh, how about a song ender that's so good we're gonna do it twice? Is it wind at my back? I forget. Wind, I don't. Wind at my back, man. I love it. I just love it. So good. I... It doesn't only end disc one. It ends disc two. So it's a two timing uh, uh, album closer. Oh, I can't I imagine how much that you may have paid for that, Scott. Because <laughs> I've tried to buy that record and it's not not cheap. No, it's not. The snow I vinyl. Love my wife. That was a Christmas present. Isn't it? It's a triple, I think, too. Yeah, think it's, it's a yeah. triple piece of vinyl. Uh, well, a cherished piece of vinyl. I love it. Um, had a few people mention this band. Uh, a lot of people were talking about the title track to their third album. But I'm going with this one. Mm. The album ender, Fool's Gold Overture. Uh -huh. That's the, yeah, yeah. So That's good, good, man. So good. Uh, <laughs> Agree. Yeah, I listened I to it recently. Yep. Oh, that's Here's fantastic. I could have gone several different ways with, had several different votes for, including uh, Lady Fantasy, which ends their yeah. second album. But I'm going with their fourth album, yeah. Mood Madness, and the great oh. track Lunar Seat. I love uh, that album, man. Campbell I love so that good. album. That's the picture disc looks like. Yeah, man. And then we had uh, somebody in the comments here saying, where's the Jethro Tull at? Uh, well, that's like again another. We had, we, well, you know, we had uh, Baker Street Muse, but yeah, that's again the problem. <laughs> you know, but I'm going with Wind Up. I mean, you know, where do you put this? It's you just, can't... it's one piece. It's 40 minutes. I don't know. It's not close. Well, it's an opener and a closer. It is. Yeah. It could be yeah. the best album opener, best album closer. <laughs> Uh, but to me, for an album that isn't a concept album at all, this has got the best uh, way to close out a concept album ever. I just love it so much. And then there were some bands that it was really, really hard to pick, you know, because I'm employing the one per artist rule. Of course, it almost goes without saying at this point. I know. But who I, do I pick? Uh, well, there you go. Maiden, 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 Maiden got on there. To be on there. Or ah, how about Halloween be my name. name, man? You talk about a way to close an album. <laughs> oh man, I just get goosebumps just thinking about how amazing that whole entire album is. And the first time I heard Bruce Dickinson's voice, I was already a humongous Maiden fan. I absolutely adored their first two albums. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, the drummer in my band got their first album on cassette the day it came out. He came to band practice that day, put it in. I, I had a new favorite band. I've never looked back. But, man, that first time I heard Number of the Beast and I heard Bruce in the band. Oh. Air Raid Woo! Siren, right? He's oh, man, I get Air fired Raid up Siren. just thinking about it. 1980 just <laughs> seems like yesterday, boys and girls. But here in my hot little hand, I've got the 10 best album closers of all time. I had nominees for this band, uh, the closing tracks of all four of their first four albums, uh, which meant the debut is Epper Sue or uh, Death of Mother Nature Sweet. The second album would have been, uh, what is it, and Kama Drew, uh, Hymn to the At Man. The third album would have been the Combined uh uh Mysteries and Mayhem and Pinnacle. I'm going with uh, you mentioned this, Wayne, right? Yeah, Magnum Opus. Magnum Opus at number 10. Yep. Fantastic. So perfect. Such a great way. It's all it's not an instrumental, but it's kind of an instrumental. Seems like got one. a little yeah. vocals in the beginning. So it serves the same function as a another album closer by a band from Canada we'll be talking about in a minute at number nine. I'm going with Love, Rain, someone, or Someone me. mentioned it. I think Ian LaBelle mentioned yeah. Love, Rain, or Me. Yep. He did, and he is dead right. I think uh, somebody mentioned uh, Who's Next, and uh, you know, I can't argue with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, Wayne, Wayne had Wayne again. But, yeah. Uh, Which, I if just, you take the full length World Fool Fools again, it might be longer, but <laughs> we're talking like yeah, the one that radio like, doesn't edit, you know. <laughs> Just such a fan. But, I love quality. I mean, what's your favorite track on that? Because actually the guys on Taste Like Music did their 1973 list. And I'm trying to figure out, what, is it The Real Me? Is it 515 or is it Love, Rain, or Me? And I think of that that scene in, there was an episode of Fancy Island. And they showed this guy in like in a, 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 a golf range. It's hitting hitting by golf balls and he's playing Love, Rain, or Me. And the golf balls aren't hit, hurting him at all. The correct answer to that question, Kyle, <laughs> is the punk meets the godfather. Okay. That's <laughs> so great. Hey, I love Quadrophenia though. Uh, it's it's uh, Bellboy. 
Yeah, Bellboy. Every song, Sting. it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. At number eight, I'm going with a modern prog album. Modern prog album that ends with a song called Fox Light. Oh, it's great album. And from Silence oh, to Somewhere. Uh, great album. You know, I, I've got three modern ones in here. No, I got four. And one thing they all have in common being great, great albums is that uh, – they, they, they know how to stick the landing. It's so important for an album to just end the right way. And this one ends absolutely perfectly. It ends with their version of, a, I guess it's like what Siberian Katru is for uh, Close to the Edge. Uh, Foxlight is for uh, Wobblers from Silence to Summer. Just love it. Another yeah. modern one. I'm going with Big Big Train and uh, Folklore. This album ends with a song killing the bees or telling the bees or whatever. Some about the damn bees. And uh, <laughs> it's a really warm and m moving kind of song. And then just knowing that the, the late, great David Longdon will never, ever, ever be able to write another song ever again. Oh, yeah, that's just brings that single man tear coming on down. Uh, it, it is tell the bees. Thank you, Kevin, from <laughs> <laughs> but I just I, I love Big Big Train uh, And yeah, I got that on my list At number whatever Next up is La Via Strongiato It's gotta be there Yeah Right, I mean How do you end an album? This is this is like a blueprint This is how you do it, boys and girls the, yep. Talking about sticking a landing This is how you stick a landing Right here yep. And, yep. and so much fun live, man Just seeing the boys perform that thing live is just a real treat. Let's see. That's one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm at number five. All right. <laughs> so you have Magnus Opus and a, 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 an exercise in self indulgence. They're so it so yeah. typifies Prague. The title is so perfect. Yes. yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Number five. This one's for the Colonel. Uh, some people have mentioned uh, Current Evil 9, but I have uh, excluded uh, Epics as album closers. For this exercise, that doesn't mean Pirates can't be there. <laughs> okay. oh, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of uh, works at all, but Side 4 is perfect, man. I love both tracks on Side 4, and Pirates is like that last moment of pure absolute unadulterated genius out of Emerson Lake and Palmer with the great Pete Sinfield laying down some lyrics up. Oh, just love pirates, man at number four. And uh, I've had, had a couple people uh, mention this one, not least of which is uh, the great Kevin at Prague radio. I'm going with the uh, oh, uh, broken sky no, uh, long day reprise. <laughs> The Neil Morris Band, Similitude of a Dream. Uh, what a great way to end one of the greatest modern prog rock albums of all time. And uh, Eric Gillette's vocals at the end of this, just, oh, yeah, yeah. Just incredible. Everybody knows how much I love Neil Morris. So that should be no big surprise for anybody. Mike Portnoy all day, every day, man. Of course. You know. <laughs> I saw him play the whole thing. I remember we went to the Neil Morris Band show. Where, where'd you see him at, Kyle? In St. Paul. They, they were here. Actually, the same night um, Beck was here. I kind of wanted to see that, but I ended up getting free tickets to Neil Morris. I was like, I haven't seen Portnoy in many years, so I may as yeah. well see him play the whole thing. And, you know, that was a massive deal because Portnoy was talking about that record left and right for like a year and a half. Yeah, I saw, I saw that show in yeah. Cleveland, and Kevin is dead right. When Eric Gillette sings that, come on, that last, oh man, it, ladies and gentlemen, it really honestly does not get a whole lot better than that. Now we're into the top three uh, album closings of all time. And man, uh, I, I had so many suggestions for this band. A lot of people suggested it. A lot of people suggested the Fountain of Salamis. We know a lot of people suggested Supper's Ready. I had nominations for all of those. Uh, but uh, when it came right down to it, I do I go with uh, ah. Afterglow? <laughs> do I go with Los Endos? Afterglow? Los... I'm going with Los, Los Endos, Endos, man. Can't go wrong, man. Was, you know, the, the Afterglow thing is almost like a part of a suite where you've got uh, unquiet slumber for the sleepers in that quieter leading into Afterglow. It's almost you know half a side too. Kind of feels like part of a suite this is you know more of a standard one track, track. And what a 
Yes. What a great way to end an album, Los Endos. I got at number three. My favorite band. My favorite band of all time, right there. Well, and, and Packet uh, always plays it live too. I think it, like closes it, does the encore with it. So yeah, you know, even in the comments here, we got uh, yeah, Terry Walker wanted Afterglow. Kevin from Prague Radio wanted uh, Los Endos. But, but no one's mentioned uh, the Cinema Show and Isle Plenty. The, the thing is, the Isle Plenty threw me off. I would have chosen the Cinema Show probably. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's ID'd separately. Isla Plenty is the album closer, and uh, it's not a song. It's just, no, it's, it's not really. So I just five. take chop it off, and then the cinema. Then I would because cinema shows my favorite Genesis song. But yeah, yeah, like there's a band that had fantastic album closers. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, as, as I was looking, almost every album, you know, from Dress the knife, is it the, the knife. Yep. Even though, it, it, tell me, okay, and then there were three ends with the pop song but how about that ending of duke yep. <laughs> duke travels you know phil collins Ooh. best performance ever in my mind <laughs> yeah. you know what the, the endings of all their albums like even in the 80s like the invisible touch ends with the brazilian and uh we can't dance from the 90s ends with fading lights it's all great yeah like fading lights is great too yep lights, perfect it's example. All awesome. yeah. like None of it sucks. It's all great. <laughs> Some bands have a very good ability to make to create albums that have great closers. I have other bands yeah. I know of, it's like hit and miss or don't do that well, but uh, Genesis is one of those bands that has a great knack for doing that. That's a good yeah. point. From Absolutely. the 83 album, from the 83 album, someone just mentioned it's going to get better, and I have to say that is an excellent song. It's an excellent choice. I should have mentioned it in honorable mentions. It's mm. awesome. I love that song. <laughs> that little... <laughs> that Tony Banks has with the MIDI uh, keyboards or whatever that <sighs> that he does in the verses. I don't know. I can't. Anyway. Yeah, Neil Morris really is the king of the closer. Yep. Even, even back I, in the Fox Beard days, right? What's this one right there? You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. You have that? Oh, yep. nice. One Spox <laughs> album I have on vinyl. <laughs> Well, it's about, Apple, but... it's about Kevin Gilbert, too, which also helps, but it's just a fantastic piece. It's, it's the yeah, longest Spock song they ever did. Up to that I point. love that whole album, actually. Uh, yeah, me too. All in a Sunday. All in a Sunday. <laughs> well, and um, all, or, uh, all at, the end of the, at the end of the day, Thoughts Part 2, it's just, it's, this album is fantastic. It's I, perfect. It's it a perfect is. disc. I love, I love that record so much. Me but too. hey, boys and girls, we're getting sidetracked uh, with the comments and <laughs> yeah. talking about the great Neil Morris and stuff. And I'm at number two. And uh, yeah, it's been mentioned before, but it's got to be mentioned again. It's Starless off of Red. Uh, I just absolutely love this so much. Obviously, the sax solo is so cool. But uh, you know what? Bill Bruford, when he's engaged, when Bill Bruford is a compositional part of what's going on. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to argue with that run from uh, Yes's first album all the way through to maybe, uh, I don't know, through Bruford. Discipline, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Let's go from the first Yes album to Discipline and all the stuff he did in between with, you know, the Pavlov's dogs and National Health and all the, and the solo records he did and all the Bruford stuff he did. Yeah. Yep. I was just yeah. listening to Feels Good to Me the other day because I'm yeah. about to do 1978. Yep, totally. So good. Uh, yeah, and, and Bruford is a big uh, part of why Starless is so great. A uh, big compositional uh, part of that. He wrote, you know, some of that, that whole middle section was his piece. And like I said, I'm not going with my favorite song of all time. <laughs> I'm not doing it. They ruined it. I don't want to hear We Have Heaven anymore. We already oh. heard that song. It kills it. <laughs> 99.8% perfect. If yeah. it were ID'd as a separate track, you know, I, I, then it wouldn't be an album closer anymore. No. So, you know, we had nominations for Perpetual Change. We had nominations for Siberian Katru. We had lots of nominations for uh, uh, oh, the winner here for sure. But I also yeah. had people nominating Tempest Fugit. I had people uh, nominating awesome. Endless Dream. But I'm going with Awaken. I knew it. I knew it was going to be yeah. either Ritual or Awaken. Great, great pick. <laughs> yeah, great Awaken pick. is my number Fantastic one. Fantastic song. Album closer of all time. It just feels right. And for those of you who watched the Daily Doug, uh, you know, he was talking about like Steve Howe's like end, like that guitar part right at the end. 
uh, saying it ruined the whole song. He's dead wrong. Listen to it again. <laughs> it's actually what makes the song, my friend. It starts with Rick Wakeman's absolute crazy piano histrionics, and it ends with the Steve doing a little cool little run at the end. It bookends it perfectly. It's exactly what you want from the two greatest soloists in the history of rock music, Steve Howe and Rick Wakeman, the end of the greatness. The end of the genius there. You know, there were a lot of great moments after going for the one. Lots and lots. I'm on record as saying the ladder and magnification and yeah. key studio are yeah. you know, fantastic records. But come on, man. Awaken was kind of kind of the end of the perfection there. And that's it's not just an album closer. It's kind of a end of an era closer as well. And uh, to it, uh, you know, the garden from Rush probably should have taken. I probably should have taken a little harder look at that too in my ranking, but there you go. That's my top 10 album posters of all time. All right. Picks. Here's for Scott, man. Those were great picks. I all love every one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And uh, Terry Walker saying that's Doug's wrong about Steve. How? Yes, he is. He's dead. <laughs> wrong. No, we love daily Doug. Great channel over there. Uh, so what is going on, Wayne? What's going on with, uh, all of your channels, I know uh, you've got a, uh, like a gentle giant thing going on, which might tie into our show next weekend. So what's what's the deal with that? Uh, right now, I'm just going through, uh, film myself listening to the Gentle Giant albums. And I have to say, I was looking at the credits to the first two Gentle Giant albums, and I'm thinking to myself, how the heck did these guys do this live? Yeah, just with all the little instruments. But yeah, I'm going through their whole discography. Uh, I'm going to film them all this week. They might be uploaded after our stream next week. But yeah, having fun doing that on Prism of the Prague, which quite honestly, how much more Prague can you get than Gentle Giant? There you go. But really? uh, on a puck full of heap, uh, filmed a bunch of reactions yesterday to stuff like uh, Epica, Sabaton. Sort of a lot more on the progressive symphonic metal side. Ooh, yeah. uh, did my first reaction ever to Brother in Arms by Dire Straits. First time I ever heard that song. and Wow. It's a killer well, song. Well, I'm, I'm but, curious what Sabotage song you reacted to, Wayne. I'll have to check that out. Or uh, Sabaton. Oh, Sabaton. Not, oh, the yeah. power metal bit. Okay. Or like yeah. power metal. All right. Power metal. Yeah. So, it, and then you and Cody are doing something, right? Yeah, we just uh, last night filmed our uh, six metal masterpieces episode on his channel, and you should go check it out. Had a lot of fun talking about a lot of different albums. On that list, you will find Sabotage, one of their okay, albums. All right, the list. all right, cool. You will. You will. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I've been up to. Uh, kind of just going to start fresh in the new year and. Come I a good year. Kind of saw your Christmas. Time. You had you had the octopus and a lot of the the newer products up in your Christmas hall, Wayne. I don't know if you've yeah. seen that. I, Check out this Christmas hall. I, I knew Scott would love this one. Oh yeah, there you go. The Chronicles <laughs> never hurt nobody. Nope. So good, so good. So Cody, what's going on with the Brockway's vinyl bites? Uh, well, what are you doing Wayne, over there? Wayne just mentioned a little bit of it. Uh, yeah. We actually featured on my channel last night. Actually, he had reached out to me a couple of weeks ago. We were going to set this up a while back, but you know, because of the holidays and stuff, never got really around to doing it. But uh, we finally right, got that's it. Right. Your week. collab is on your channel. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, on, okay. it's on Brockway's Vinyl Bites. So if you want to go see that, go hit the subscribe button and check it out. But um, so what we did was we, you know, we talked about our six metal masterpieces and, and so on and so forth. And But elsewhere on the channel, I've been... Uh, I, I just did a new uh, music room tour video, which is getting some pretty good yeah. heat, it's getting some pretty that's good, good traction. It was very cool, oh, thank Cody. You. Thank you, thank you. And I got I got one that's actually coming out uh, any minute now, uh, in about half an hour. It's the dominance of Prague in the 21st century. So that'll yeah, be that, uh, that, you, you had that uh, as an upcoming. So yeah, I've been looking forward to that. Set my notifications mm -hmm. bell. So thanks, don't forget, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Much love, man. Appreciate it. And thanks to Wayne for uh, for the idea of being yeah. on the live stream together. And I hope that Scott will join us one day. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Anything and possible. <laughs> Kyle, no. what are you doing? What's going well, on over your way? <laughs> um, let's see. So I just did 
I'm starting a new series. I did the first version, which because I'm so focused on new releases at times and keeping these calendars. I'm doing a new series called the albums or the, the music new release calendars. And I had that um, collaboration albums of the year with some of my friends. One guy named is Christian. He, he does a calendar of his own. So or I've been helping him out. So he may be coming on. We're going to do this periodically throughout the year. I don't know how often it may be every couple of weeks. Um, but like, of course, we get news about new albums coming up left and right it, it could happen every hour or every couple days um like there's this band from australia called the crooked fiddle band just released a new l announced they release a new album next year so stuff like that that comes up that we are not caught up with we'll just do another album's calendar new release calendar update um i'm gonna get back to doing 1978 so you you um you're talking about bill, bill bruford and feels feels good to me I, you know i'm gonna start doing the album's calendars again um what else is coming up there's not not a, a ton of other stuff but i mean just following the channels and um, stuff I'm not remembering. I'm, I want to get back into doing other stuff outside of music because my channel isn't exclusively music. Right. Yeah. Um, you do a lot I, of stuff I, over there. I do. I just did a, a video on the t Minnesota Timberwolves. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm from Minnesota, so I have a bias. <laughs> I mean, I know you love the Heat. Although, I, are you a Bucks fan too, Scott? Yeah, I guess. No, no, no. <laughs> Not really? Because no, 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 no. we could see potentially a Bucks Timberwolves finals, but anyway. Yeah. At, at least they thought the Pistons. I yeah, yeah. Up. Although they won last night, finally. Yeah, finally. But no. So, um, yeah, yeah no, I, I actually did a movie list last year, and I didn't done. I only did one year. I want to start doing that eventually, where just people do their albums of the year. People are doing their movies of the year too. So, yeah, I've noticed your channel has a lot of different things on it as you go back in time. And, uh, you know, yeah, you should just do whatever you want to do, man. Those, it's kind of it. You, you know, I started do, YouTube. Right around the same time that Notes Reviews did and, and XCC of Tranquility did. I, but it was just, I did, like you did the uh, Fire Note, I had this blog, of right. course. And so, and I just like, I'll try YouTube. I was a little gun shy because there's always right. people trolling on YouTube. And um, then we did like record, uh, you know, record store day videos with my wife and stuff like that. So um, I do want, there's one thing I'm going to do Kevin Gilbert related, I was thinking, because Kevin Gilbert's estate just released these two CDs, which are great. The Thud Alternate, which mm. really sounds a lot different. Um, a lot of these versions are different. And then they released the, the first official live giraffe album. Oh, wow. Um, right a few years back, Kevin Gilbert's estate on the 20th anniversary of Thud, they released a box set, which came with two extra discs. Right. So between the original Thud, this version, and then that box set, there's so many different versions of every song. So I figured ra rather than just try to cram it all in one, I may do a video on every song. They won't go that long, but second about, the, you know, when you... Goodness gracious, how many versions? So this is this version. Just as, as a Kevin Gilbert sort of completist and fanatic, the Kevin Gilbert fan base that knows him, that's one of my other plans coming up in the next couple of months, hopefully. So right, but, right. Um, awesome. Yeah, Kyle runs a great channel. He, uh, you, I love those uh, those top ten Spotify reaction things that you do. I think those are cool. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Yeah, and then the Prague Archives thing. And I noticed how um, Rhyme Signatures did something like that. Um, yeah, between Spotify, it's just kind of fun to look at lists and just say, give your your take on it. And Spotify is an easy one because it's kind of the equivalent of like the the Billboard charts, I guess, in a way. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I don't know if you've ever looked at that stuff, Scott. If you use Spotify much, um, I do, I do. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I was just uh, reading these comments, Kyle. Yeah, people are wanting me to do uh, you know, some kind of like reaction videos, right? Uh, <laughs> which is really not what I do. So the idea of, uh, you know, just listening to a, a song I've heard a million times before, I didn't think would be interesting to anybody. I thought the idea behind reaction videos is, you know, people have never heard that song before reacting right. to it. So right. you know, maybe there's some uh, traction to it. I got to think about it, uh, you know, come up with an angle that might work. Uh, you're doing 1978 next week. I was thinking maybe you're doing 2008 next week. Eventually, been, we'll probably meet. We'll yeah, eventually be doing the yeah. same year. <laughs> I've been working backwards. Uh, and uh, then I'm thinking, you know, we got real good numbers on my uh, uh, gray area prog bands where I focused on post-punk. Uh, last week, I might do uh, uh, another episode of that, maybe just focus on, I don't know, it's hard because some of these already have like names like, Prog metal is kind of already, you know, what I'm describing, Mu yeah. you know, merging right. prog and, and metal. Jazz already has a name. It's called Fusion. But there's mm -hmm. some others that don't have names that are in that in between. Uh, 
people talk about bands like Tears for Fears and uh, Midnight Oil and a lot of these new wave bands, right, that were actually pretty progressive. If you go back and listen to OMD and the Human League and some of these things. Uh, so I might I might do that. I don't know. I have you, you I did have no that. Idea. Yeah, that, that video was like, is it like different kinds of product? That one that you did the post punk one this past, which I really like that video. That was fun. I, yeah, I mean, I would be really intrigued by some of those other where that series could go. Um, yeah, and, yeah, you know, and to Terry Terry Walker again saying, I can explain things better than the Daily Doug. Absolutely, I can explain <laughs> things better than he can. Uh, you, or, know, uh, but, you know, it's, Scott, it's he's actually really good. Or Scott, just uh, one more thing. Uh, I forgot to mention this. I'm going to look at some of these people that whenever you mention them in Prague, aren't they're always like well they're not prog right so i thought of taking somebody like frank zappa and doing a video of what does frank zappa mean to progressive rock okay. or even like pink floyd yeah. and some of these sort of in-between bands peripheral like sort it. of yeah yeah because yeah, that's kind of perception <laughs> you know I mean, yeah. some of these artists, you know, Stephen Wilson calls Nine Inch Nails prog or yeah. progressive, at least, you know. Um, He's not. You know, do you I mean, ever listen to that podcast he does, The Album Years? Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah they were talking about some, Like, they were asking him about Jellyfish and, like, some of the bands. It was interesting. And then, Tim, I, I chimed in on Twitter and Tim Bonus replied back to me because I'd never heard Probably. of this guy. Um, but. Yeah, there's just so much of that stuff that would be great to see content. You know, it's great to talk about every other sort of retro prog band, newer prog band that sounds like. But, you know, there's just other stuff out there if, if the audience is there. I know yeah. the focus is yeah. prog still. Um, and, you know, but, uh, honestly, that's what we're doing here, right, Wayne? Yeah, like the one thing uh, they always mention and they're like, well, uh, Frank Zappa never called himself prog. No. But they like to bring that up but also i believe what they're quoting is also the same interview he didn't necessarily say yes was completely prog genesis wasn't completely prog right. and went through it and he's like well there's sometimes yeah but. yeah you know and and you gotta you gotta also remember that these guys are uh business people who yep. have an image and they've got uh, public relations people and the reality was was that uh, you wanted to distance yourself from the dreaded four word, four letter word that was prog by all means necessary. Even the great Frank Zappa went running and screaming away from it. Well, you know what? We're taking it back, man. It's not a yep. dirty word. Yeah, it's four letters long, but prog is not a dirty word. And even the great Ian Anderson for years and years and years. Oh, I'm not prog. No, Jethro Tull was never prog. And then he does a tour a couple years ago called Jethro Tull, the prog years. Come on, dude. <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course. You know, like, like is going to be talked about in my upcoming video on Brockway's Vinyl Bites. There has been a certain kind of resurgence slash dominance in the 21st century of prog rock, and and how it's reached all over. Like for the last 25, 24 years, as of tomorrow, uh, 24 years of just all these all of these great bands, either these classic bands coming out and still making great records, or these. Uh, these new bands, you know, that are just that are in it, like Tesseract or Haken or, you know, the Flower Kings, they've been around since the 90s. But you get what I'm saying. It's like there's all of a sudden just this dominance of people who are just not caring about FM, AM, any of that. They're no. just making these records because they love to make them. Well, and the School of Rock. Cool. Yeah. I just yeah. saw a video like I was looking up that Umphreys McGee thing with Mike Partner. Mike Partner played with Umphreys McGee the last two nights. I think it was last yeah, night. Yeah. That's on my TV right now, buddy. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and the, the, the School of Rock version of uh, Plunger. I was like, well, the School of Rock kids know what Freeze me. You know that something's going through there. These younger kids playing proggy kind of stuff. Oh, so yeah. it's happening, yeah. you know. And we saw little areas where it would touch, where uh, an endless sporadic would end up on Guitar Hero or whatever. or and, and people would start having, you know, some connection with maybe a band like Dream Theater. But oh, yeah. it's gone deeper than that now. What I've seen is that there's been like this divide between, you know, what a younger person calls prog and what an old geezer like mm -hmm. me considers prog. Mm -hmm. And it, it was feeling like it was two totally to separate camps. And uh, I'm, I'm feeling that there's been a whole lot of cross pollination and intermingling. Uh, 
Cody, you just picked up uh, the Moon Safari record, right? Yeah. Oh no, I and, just got a I got a whole bunch of uh, uh, other prog stuff that I've never heard before too. But yes, I got the Moon Safari. But I also got a CD from Nick D. Virgilio I'd never heard before. A CD from a band called Enchant, which was a Christmas gift to me. Of course, oh, that's, love, that's love Enchant. Right oh, Ted, yeah. well, Ted Leonard, of course. Yeah, you know, Better Seeking Animals, Box Beard. That was his first uh, band. I love, I love me some Ted Leonard, man. Oh, yeah. Scott, yeah. let me ask you: Have you ever heard of a band called Another Sky? They're from no. England. No. Well, because I was on Reddit the other day and I was talking about Bent Knee with this guy. You know Bent Knee. I know Bent Knee. And yeah. he, he's looking for music and he actually found my channel. But um, he's like talking about another guy. I'd never heard of this band. And I yeah. actually am really going to check them out now. But they're, yeah, they're they're younger. They've only been around like five years. But, you know, just like some of these newer bands that you're stumbling on, they're, they're out there. It's just maybe more of a matter of just finding them and promoting them. Um, you know, I, I think uh, several people mentioned Knights of Sidonia by oh. Muse. An that, that's an banger. album closer. Yeah, that's a terrific that's track. A banger. Great. That's, great, for, that's a showstopper. <laughs> it's so good. For as horrible as it was, I think the best thing for Prague was, quite honestly, the pandemic. Mm. People stuck at home. I need something to listen to. Just yeah, I, opening I show your some, horizons. Show to, some of the other ones I had, by the way. But. All right. Remember yeah. this one? It's, Cassandra yeah, Gemini. I, I agree yeah. with you, Wayne. Yep. Yep. Yeah, like uh, Mars, and, and six to eight, this this ends that album too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, and, and you mentioned the Moon Safari. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I, I do have to give a shout out to Naomi for 365 Days of Prague. She turned me on to that band, and oh, nice. Oh, but, you know, yeah, there was a there was a band That's that uh, all of a sudden. Uh, their guitars sound a little bit heavier, you know. You hear a little prog metal at times in certain uh, sections of certain songs. That element was never present in their music before, so it is exciting to see a lot of these young bands. You, uh, Temek and uh, No Spoon and The Anchorage and uh, you know a lot of these bands coming up this year. Uh, very exciting time. Advent Horizon. I know Kevin had them as his number one album of 2023 a lot of these bands are younger and that's exciting uh yeah. zop you know that cat's a young dude so we're seeing a lot of uh, uh like a like a youth infusion and what that's doing is it's kind of the two camps i was talking about they're not there anymore man if you're a fan of haken you've heard yes there was yeah, a, yes. a period of time when prog metal was like a dirty style within the prog rock scene. You yes, know what I'm talking and about. And, and vice versa. A lot of the younger kids doing uh, the prog metal, they didn't have no time for no oh. Yes or Genesis or ELP. They don't shred, you know. Uh, <laughs> Steve Howe doesn't play 33 notes a second. Even though yeah. uh, Greg it's Lake joined, joined, trans or joined Sabotage or was trans with transfer being orchestra so they always yeah. reference elp with sabotage but yeah no i know and then rob laduca from near fest started getting into dream theater and then suddenly now prog metal can be acceptable but there's like yeah. very specific types of it but there's so much of it out there the whole metal scene is like in, it's almost like 1a and 1b with metal and prog metal that's yeah. true that's true and and we we there, there's been a big plug too because Michael uh, Michael Ackerfeld of Opeth has gone on record saying that he loves bands like Camel and ELP and then you know even uh, Dave Mustaine mentioned in his book from Megadeth he's like well I grew up and you know ELP was on the radio and such at the time so like there's these there's these guys that are out there in the last twenty years that are you know given big plugs and the fact that a lot of the old bands like yes even though they're in a different you know iteration of the band now but they're all still out there keeping the flame alive look steve hackett's touring and playing genesis music he's i've seen him seven freaking times man <laughs> I've, I've even interviewed the guy I and he's a road him. warrior he's become a road warrior in his advanced age <laughs> I, I, oddly enough but yeah he's, he's got a yeah. new record coming out and it's gonna be awesome the single's great oh i can't wait for it february yeah. can't come fast enough it's gonna be yeah. a lot of fun uh and with a lot of these newer bands, uh, it, it really does, like, progressive rock is about, or progressive in general, is about progressing. Yes. And I, I do notice it being a part of a lot of Facebook groups, especially prog rock related, where you do see that very big line divide. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's 
kind of sad because they're missing it, out on some really good music. No, oh, yeah. It depends. I mean, it depends on someone's taste and how open-minded their taste can get. I don't know. Sometimes it's one song can, that can do it, but sometimes yeah. it's just never going to happen. A friend of mine who's a massive Yes fan thinks metal and prog are like oil and water. They don't belong together. But oh, Really? You know, yeah, Black that's Water Park, my friend. Yeah, he, he <laughs> likes the, the clean vocal Opeth. He did go to see Opeth and Porcupine Tree on that tour when the Opeth wasn't doing any growling. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm with him on that. You know, I'm not yeah. a... I, I really prefer the clean vocals. I, I, I think yeah. uh, Pale Communion and Sorceress are Opeth's two best albums. That's <laughs> you know, that's yeah, just what I prefer. More you power know? to you. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I happen to like the, the mix, but, uh, you know, more power to you. Yeah. I, know, I know a lot of people loved, started loving Opeth at that point. Like, well, he was big yeah. influence by Camel, and, you know, so... Um, it's just yeah. a matter of it, whether your tastes are going to open up to it or not. I try to get my wife into some of the stuff, and she doesn't care for any of it. <laughs> so, There's so much out there, though. And that's know. the thing. If you take a, a, you know, a, a bluegrass band at random, pick another bluegrass band at random, they're going to sound a whole bunch yeah. alike. If you pick a top 40 band, pop band, and pick yeah. another K-pop band and listen to them. They're going to sound a whole bunch of like, it's that way in every single musical genre, except one. You, <laughs> you can't tell me that no. uh, uh, Anthony Phillips era Genesis sounds like magma, you know, no. uh, the, the variety of sound available within the prog genre is unlike anything else because anything goes that's why it's the greatest music ever recorded that's why we honor it here every sunday at one o'clock eastern time uh yeah. with wayne my faithful co-host cody who's uh i guess you've been deputized i guess you're now uh, <laughs> i don't know what you are we got to come up with a title for you and then there's the ever enigmatic kyle joining us for another great episode thank you guys uh uh, I hope you have a real, real good New Year's. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Just quickly, well. what are you most excited about in 2024, Scott? I'd just be curious on what music or otherwise. What are you looking forward to? Being the absolute self-centered megalomaniac <laughs> that I am, I'm really excited about uh, hitting a million views on the channel in 2024. Just something about that just sounds really, really weird. It does. Uh, and that's, that's going to cool. be really cool. We should hit that probably in July, I figure. And we'll hit 10,000 subs probably in uh, maybe May or June. That'll be cool, too. So that's what I'm looking forward to most, just seeing the, yeah, seeing the odometer turnover. Always yeah. a lot of fun. I know um, the Canadian stud muffin referenced you on his, like, you know, what was he calling that video? <laughs> the wanker? <laughs> the wanker. He's like, he's yeah. not a wanker, but he, he he seems like he's a wanker because he won't go away. You're, you're oh, never going away, no. are you? <laughs> yes. I don't Hey, I my don't second year in a row, away. Cody. Yes. Cody, that was my second year in a row being named uh, one of the Canadian Stud Muffins uh, <laughs> Wankers of the Year. So that was great. Wow. Take it as a yeah. Take it as as a as a good thing. You know, that's I. Hey, man, I love. I I just think you're a really cool person, and I love chatting with you, and I love your channel, man. So keep doing what you're doing, man, because you're doing it right. Now we're really having right. fun here. And this year, uh, you know, Sunday prog stream was, uh, you know, just something I figured would be, uh, you know, a good way to just like talk about stuff that necess doesn't necessarily fit like a regular episode, kind of like a clearing yeah. out the stuff, which was a horrible idea. And Wayne and I uh, figured it out real quick, narrowing on yeah. one topic and drill down and uh, the people will follow. And we yeah, that get a lot more VOD. What was that in your hand just there, Cody? <laughs> Out of the hell. <laughs> Something that's not usually no. mentioned on oh, a okay. Like okay. This, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But no, anyway, this great. was awesome. Uh, great <laughs> ever talking about Bebop Deluxe. Uh, right at the end of the show. Sure, why not, man? I love Bill Nelson. Uh, but yeah, and uh, Kevin over at Prog Radio coming up with the uh, uh, the Laid Brigade. Do we like it? Nah. <laughs> the Laid Brigade. Brigade. That's awesome. Anyway, guys, Blade another Brigade. great show. Uh, I will see all of you in the new year where uh, next Sunday, uh, join me, Wayne, and Cody, and maybe even Kyle will join. Who knows? Maybe. As we discuss uh, not one of Gentle Giants albums. 
not to we're gonna go through all 11 of them yeah. and uh, talk about how awesome they are even those last three still had moments of absolute awesomeness in them <laughs> i say they never put out a bad album so it's going to be a lot of fun talking about the mighty uh, uh, the scott squad <laughs> <laughs> oh there you go lieutenant, lieutenant cody. cody someone someone said lieutenant cody and i think that's like that i think works. i'm gonna bring that over to brockway's vinyl bites that's yeah uh, i think that cool. works for me <laughs> And uh, the, the Golden Peacock right at the end talked about Claire de Lune Ballerina off of Crystal Ball. I yeah. was actually going to go with Sweet Stinks. Madam Blue. Someone mentioned that earlier in the chat. I remember. Good, good call. Yeah. Uh, I actually thought of that like halfway through and I'm showing albums. I'm like, I didn't pull sticks. Oh. <laughs> and I knew you should, I you should do a whole like list on these. Scott, I mean, you could do probably a top 50 easy. Easy. Or, well, you yeah. know, that's what I got Kevin here for. Kevin's keeping mm -hmm. notes. Uh, remember, Friday at noon Eastern, all this great stuff, all these amazing songs we've been talking about for the last hour and a half. Uh, Kevin's collating it now. He's making the list. He's checking it twice. Uh, Friday <laughs> at noon Eastern, the Prague Corner playlist on Prague Radio. If you don't have Prague Radio on your phone, on your what? laptop, uh, what are you doing, man? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I actually was just sent new ad copy. Uh, let's see if I can do it. We got a we got a minute here. One other thing I wanted to ask you about, Scott, if it's possible. Yeah. Um, just to mention, if you ever have you thought about trying to add an, a Discord channel, I just added one for my channel. It's no, we need to, we but, need to talk about that. I yeah. know nothing about that stuff okay. here. Just because I think a lot of people like to chat and just see what's up with each stream every week, and you know they don't know what's going on. I like just it. go on the Discord. I mean, they could make a comment on your community page, I suppose, or on the Facebook. Page. Well, we'll talk a little bit but, more okay. about that sure. here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a dry run of some ad copy for Kevin here. Uh, okay. Three, two, one. Greetings and salutations. This is Scott from the Prague Corner, and you're listening to the Prague Corner playlist only on Prague Radio. It's awesome. <laughs> and now we got our bump number two. Let's see. Oh, this is a little bit longer. This is a bit awesome. Long. Okay. Doing this with, with musicians. Here we go. Hopefully, Kevin can use these uh, so I don't have to do it again. <laughs> but you're never going to do a live like DJ set on Prog Radio, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. probably good. But yeah. anyway, here we go. Here's the second one in three, two, Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I'm Scott from the Prog Corner. I'm here to remind you to tune in each and every week for the Prog Corner playlist right here on Prog Radio. All the music that I talk about on the YouTube channel, but I'm not allowed to play. You can hear on Prog Radio every Friday at noon Eastern with a replay Saturday at 6 p.m. The Prog Corner playlist. It's awesome. That's awesome. That was the best. I love yeah. Russell Sounders. Your, yep. uh, hey, you know you, you've made it, Scott. You're not. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I love about working uh, with Kevin is uh, he basically just tells me what to do and I do it. I don't. You know, I don't. I don't want to think. I think too much about these ridiculous little episodes that I put together on YouTube, and uh, my brain doesn't have a whole lot left. Oh yeah, good work. Well, he's <laughs> taking work, some of that that work off done. your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Yes, my homework is done. Thank you, Kevin, for all that you do. Wayne, have a great new year. We'll be talking to you soon. Cody, yep. you've been a great addition to the show. Thank you so much, Kyle. As always, uh, excellent contributions. And uh, thank uh, you, Scott. We'll see Thanks you again, very Scott. soon. Thank you all for have a great uh, all new year, Scott. Do. Happy New Year. Thanks and to Scott. Happy New Year, everybody. Giant next week. Oh, it's it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be my, yeah, I love him so much. Anyway, guys, I love you. Peace in the Middle East. Love you too. Free man, to bet and God save the king. Save King Chucky. Oh, that boy needs your saving right now. That son of a gun sure does. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.